Hello, so today we are going to take a look at the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter. We're at Edwards Air Force Base in the US. And the actual reason we're going to take a look at it is to look at supersonic flight, which you would think would be straightforward in a Starfighter, but actually it isn't. This aircraft was developed in the late 50s, early 60s and went into service during the 1960s. It actually wasn't in service that long with the US Air Force. But, um, we're going to go and see what you have to do to go supersonic with it and it's it's not as straightforward as you might think so we'll get to that in a minute so first of all we're going to get the aircraft fired up so to get the the starfighter started you press Control shift j which opens the the knee board and then you can come in here and you can configure your loadout for fuel we're not going to put tip tanks on the wings or anything like that we're going to come up and call the EPU and the EPU gives us some stairs and an external power unit over at the side of the aircraft and we can switch that on and that gives us some basic um, power to the aircraft. Okay, so the first thing we go and do, let's just go and whiz through. So we turn the anti-skid switch on, we go and calibrate the altimeter. So we'll press B to shortcut doing that, so you can see the altimeter moving there. We're going to set the airspeed marker ready for takeoff. So you want it on 180 knots, that's good enough. You set the gyro compass to tachan mode, which you sort of correct itself there, which will give us an accurate direction we are heading in. We'll turn on the pressure suit, so that's down here. Then we turn on the oxygen, which is next to it. Then we close the fresh air scoop. So we push the button in on this and then pull it back and it closes a vent outside the cockpit. We put the cockpit temperature on auto and we could turn that to halfway. It isn't actually functional, but the switch is there, so we'll use it. We'll turn the external lights on so we want the beacon lights on and then we want the um, position lights on steady and bright. It's a little bit fiddly to get to the switches. Okay, now we can start the engine. So let's go and flick the starter on number one. Um, this is always nice to listen to. Starfighter is just a beast, isn't it? So you can hear the igniters. So while that's happening, we are going to advance this throttle to just beyond idle. You can see it moves sideways when I advance the throttle in the cockpit. And then while the engine is spooling up, we will go and get the uh, inertial guidance system warmed up. So we turn it to standby. So while we're, while we're doing this, we're keeping an eye on this needle. The engine will reach idle at about 68%. So we're just letting this warm up on the inertial navigation system for a few seconds. Then we can turn it to idle and we leave it on idle. Sorry, a line, sorry, not a line, idle. We leave it on a line for until this light starts flashing, which means it has aligned. And there we go, and now we can move it to nav, and the inertial guidance system is operational. At that point, we can close the canopy, so the canopy will come down and lock. We can move these mirrors out of the way. We're not going to need the mirrors today. And we're essentially ready to taxi. We're not going to be playing with radar or anything like that today. So, collapse the takeoff position. So we go and have a look outside. We can ask the ground crew to get out of the way now, so remove the EPU. So they will be gone. And we're essentially ready to taxi out. So we're at Edwards. We're going to taxi round to runway uh, 23, is it? Yeah. 23 right, we're going to be using the shorter runway. Although I say shorter, it's still enormously long compared to most runways. So parking brake off. And we're rolling. So we might as well do this from outside. So 
the Starfighter obviously is enormously powerful, but it's actually quite a handful to fly. We're flying this in the US today on purpose because if we flew this in Europe, you would probably still have to abide by the 250 knot below 10,000 feet rules, which generally are waived in the US for fighter planes. We're just coming up to the runway. Let's go and get back inside. Follow the line out to the runway. So we will be looking to begin our rotation. We, we will accelerate extremely hard down the runway with reheat on or afterburner. So we will accelerate extremely hard. We will begin rotating at 150 knots. And then we will climb out quite steeply to stop ourselves. We'll make a an effort to stay below 250, below 10,000 feet, but we're not going to guarantee it. Okay, so there goes the afterburner. Look at, look at the speed pickup. 100 knots, 130 knots, 150 knots. We begin rotating. We're in the air. Gear up, flaps up. We're doing 250 knots, we've just crept over 250 knots. But look at the climb out angle to maintain 250 knots. So if we scoot sideways, we can see Edwards disappearing behind us. Okay, zoom back around. just rolling to let the aircraft come back down to the horizon so we're already at 1100 sorry 11,000 feet so we're just coming back down to 10,000 so we're at 10,000 feet now so we'll do a gentle turn back to 45 degrees and we'll gently climb as we go I say gently climb, this plane does nothing gently. So we'll be looking to get to about 30... about 30,000 feet. So we're just coming up to uh, 16,000... 17,000... You'll notice we're quite happily sitting at about 0.85 Mach. And it's not going beyond that. The reason for that, and notice we're still climbing quite heavily, the reason for that is skin drag on the airframe. So we're, even once we get to 45 degrees, we'll level out a little bit. We still, well, we're still wanting to climb actually, so let's just get the nose up as we make this turn. So there's the airfield that we've just taken off from. Okay, so we're just keeping an eye on it. So we've just come through 23,000 feet. Notice we're still hovering about 0.85, almost 0.9 Mach. We won't go through Mach 1 unless we force it. This is the strange thing about the Starfighter. Essentially what's going to happen... Well, I'll talk about this from inside so we can actually hear ourselves think. What's going to happen when we get to Mach 1? We're going to go into a well, we're going to do I think they call it a snake maneuver. We are going to climb up to 30,000 feet, so we're coming up to 27,000. I'm just going to expedite this slightly so you can see I'm increasing the climb rate to about 15 degrees, nose up. So we're just coming through 
30,000 feet and you can see the speeds actually, although the indicated airspeed is rolling back, the Mach number isn't. We're not actually slowing down as such. So we're going to turn back around, level, so 32,000 feet, we want about 33,000 feet, 34,000 feet would be perfect. And then we will begin diving, just a gentle dive. And the gentle dive will ease us through Mach 1. So in level flight, the Starfighter will not easily go supersonic. But in a gentle dive it will, and the crazy thing is, once you have gone supersonic, the shock cone forms around the aircraft, and a lot of the skin drag disappears, and then you really start accelerating. So we're just turning back. So we are descending, we're back to 30,000 feet. You can see we're bordering on Mach 1 at the moment. We've gone a bit low. I was trying to do this a bit more controlled than this, I didn't hold it up in the turn. So we'll climb again as we finish the turn, coming back to 225. So we're back up to 30,000 feet. I'm trying not to get too far away from Edwards while we're doing this. So there we go, we're coming back to 33,000 feet. We're, we're not far away from Mach 1. Right, now we're going to begin our gentle dive. We're just going to complete the turn. Okay. I'm going to begin trimming those down. Watch the speed. So we're just about to go supersonic. Quite often you will see this stutter as it goes through Mach 1. It doesn't look like it's going to do it today. So we are now supersonic. So we had trouble getting to Mach 1, remember. We are now going to gently climb and we're going to continue to accelerate. Because we have gone supersonic, so a lot of the skin drag has disappeared. Just going to lower the nose a little bit, because we're coming up through 32,000 feet. The sweet spot for speed is about 37 to 38,000 feet. And from there you can zoom climb to 60, 70, 80,000 feet. So we're just on the border of not being supersonic, so I'm just going to fix that again. So it really is a balancing act to get above the speed of sound, but once you're above it, you're fine. Okay. We're at 30, just under 33,000 feet. We're just above Mach 1. It's not having a happy time of it, is it? Doing, trying to do it. Let's get some speed up. So we're dropping at 2,000 feet a minute, and you can see that it's helping us accelerate. So before we go too much lower, let's just start climbing at the same rate, and get that altitude back. And we should find we continue accelerating now. So we've just gone through Mach 1.2, and we are accelerating now. Yeah, so we're getting into the thinner air, so it is a real balancing act. Once you get up to the stratosphere, you're playing a game and there's all sorts of graphs in the documentation to guide you. See, we're continuing, we're almost Mach 1.4 all of a sudden. So we're climbing, we're climbing ever more steeply, but we're also accelerating. So we're coming through 32,000 feet. So 
let's pull it into a 4,000 feet a minute climb. Yeah, so we're climbing 4,000 feet a minute. We're accelerating beyond Mach 1.5. We're going for Mach 1.6 now. It's coming up for 34,000 feet. Like I said, it's about 30, 37, 38,000 feet is the, the sweet spot. So 35,000 feet. And we're getting out towards Mach 1.7 now. So there's Mach 1.7 just passing through and we are at 36,000 feet and still climbing. The rate of climb is slowly dropping off unless I trim it. So if we look outside you can see we are shifting. Absolutely shifting. So while we are flying at this height let's do a turn and get back towards Edwards. We'll go flat out all the way. It's going to be a very, very long turn. We are going to scrub a little bit of speed, but we can just do a nice lazy turn. So, a Mach 1.75 in a, a turn above the desert is um, quite something, isn't it? Coming back down to Mach, sorry, to 36,000 feet. So, I'm just rolling a little bit out of the turn to get the nose back up. You do need to be careful about exhaust gas temperatures. So we're coming back round, we want to be going 45 degrees to go back the direction we came. Doing just bordering on Mach 1.8, which is the almost the um, maximum speed of the aircraft. So we're kind of in the sweet spot for the altitude. Yeah. I'm just coming off the engine. We were getting a, a warning about the heat of the engine. When the, the slow light comes on here, it means basically you're not high enough to continue using the afterburner. So we're coming up to 40,000 feet now. lost quite a lot of speed in that happening because I had to kill the engine but then we will roll down and go downhill back towards 36 so it's not fun is it you'd think you could just go charging around the sky in a starfighter and get a maximum performance out of it and you can't it, you have to be very controlled in the way that you apply the aircraft so we're just creeping back up to Mach 1.8 which is essentially the maximum speed you can get it to Mach 2 under very specific conditions so you will notice on the fuel we've burnt half of our fuel in doing this so if we go and have a look on the map we're coming back towards Edwards at a rate of knots it's crazy isn't it, we, we went 80 miles in one direction and now we're going back the other way. Our, our speed over the ground is to, uh, nearly, nearly 1200 knots. So we're getting the warning about heat again. So I'm pulling the engine back off the afterburner. So I think we've had enough fun. We're at risk of overheating the aircraft. Do you remember this aircraft was not designed to cruise at maximum speed. So we've pulled the throttle back out of afterburner. You can actually see when you move the throttle it goes sideways when it's on the afterburner. So it's not designed to live on the afterburner all the time. You will cook the engine essentially. Okay so we're coming back. There's Edwards. We're flying the reciprocal. 
we'll come back round and land. Obviously we don't need to descend in a sensible manner. This is a an interceptor after all. If we sit up, can we actually see Edwards down there somewhere in the desert? It would help if the sun wasn't shining on the glass, wouldn't it? Sorry, it's there. There it is. Okay, so... We're going to cut the engines to idle. And roll it in. It's a bit different than um, descending in a an airliner, isn't it? You can essentially just point it at the floor and roll it roll it through. So we'll go out a little bit further out. We're going to follow in basically the feathers, although we're not going to use ILS. It's going to be very much a visual landing. with the runway and bring it in. Landing the Starfighter is not fun. I'm going to say that straight away. As long as you stay within parameters it's fairly straightforward but you do need to be very careful. It has blown wings so there's a channel of air that is pumped over the wing from the engine so you cannot reduce the engines to idle. You have to come in at about 50% to 70% throttle with full flaps. You'll, you'll see it on the way in. I'll, um, I'll talk about it. So we're just coming in. I'm going to go for the where the EDW TACAN is. sit up in the cockpit a little bit so this a nice um, navigation point here actually there's this bluff in the desert which is a good turning point to turn in towards the airfield so you can see we're down to about 250 knots so that was just on engine on idle even going downhill it was losing airspeed at a rate of knots you really can't do that in a starfighter You've got some low cloud around, shouldn't get in our way too much. We're just coming back in towards Edwards. So there's the airfield over there. So we're rolling in. We'll go for the shorter runway, the one that's closer to the tarmac, uh, to the um, parking area, sorry. So we keep an eye on the speed. Below 280 knots we can extend the gear. We'll get to 250 before we do that, so gear down. You can see the speed is falling off now alarmingly. We are going to extend the flaps. Not full flaps yet. You can see the runway out there, so we're going to roll in. We've overshot slightly, but we're a long way out. We've got lots of time. Okay, full flaps. We'll be looking for about 170, 180 knots over the apron. 
So let's just roll one way and correct this slightly. So we're hovering at about 200 knots at the moment. To aid us with the visuals, I'm going to sit up in the cockpit using the space bar in Flight Simulator. That cloud is right in our way, isn't it? So let's, yeah, we don't want to sit up just yet. So we're now running at about 75% throttle. Or well, 75% of the throw, that was about 90% military power. I think if you read the instructions for the Starfighter, you're looking at about 85% military power for approach. So you can see the alpha angle is getting bigger and bigger. So we are going to sit up now so we can see what we're doing. Obviously, there's lots of diagrams in the instructions that come with the Starfighter about flying the pattern in an appropriate manner. But you essentially fly it into the runway under power. You do not um, pull the engines back. on the center line but it will do there is a drag parachute that you can throw out the back um, I'm not going to use it I'm just going to use wheel brakes today it has got very effective air brakes as well I'll show you them outside so I've just pushed them out okay so there you go the Starfighter we're just going to taxi off down the runway so yeah, the story today though was mostly around how difficult it is to manage the Mach numbers to get through the sound barrier is a planned operation. And then to go for high Mach numbers again is a planned operation. If you want to zoom climb for like a, a missile shot at a high altitude aircraft for example, that's going to be a very, very specific flight plan you're going to follow. You know, to get to Mach 1.7 at 37,000 feet and then pull it up and zoom climb to 70, 80, 90,000 feet in some cases. It's worth pointing out as well, although I didn't show it, there are three levers down here, or three switches for the stability augmentation system. If you disable them, you can tumble the Starfighter quite spectacularly and good luck getting out of it. Okay, we just taxi back in. I love the Starfighter. It, maybe it's because of when I grew up and it was, you know, always regarded as one of the best aircraft. I love flying around in this part of the world as well. Brings back memories of movies like The Right Stuff. Obviously the real Edwards is covered in military aircraft but Flight Simulator doesn't have that in the scenery, or not in the stock scenery. If I was to go and download some scenery we could probably have rows and rows of F-15s and all kinds of things here. But we're not. 
this is the stock scenery for Flight Simulator. So you go and park over with the Cessnas over there, so you get a, an idea of size. The Starfighter really isn't as big as you think. It's quite surprising how small it is. When you think, you know, Cessna can do 120 knots, this can do 1200 knots. Parking brake on. So it really isn't that much bigger than the Cessna, is it? It's about twice the size, but it's about the same size as a PC-21. It's interesting, isn't it? Anyway, all we should need to do to cut the engine will be to cut the fuel to the engine. But I, I really don't want to go through the shutdown checklist today completely, so... I just, I love the way they've modelled this. It's really, really good. Very, very nice. It kind of has that used look. Obviously none of the weapon systems work. You can have it loaded out. If you buy it from the developer, I think it's Just Flight sell it for the developer. I think that's where I got it from originally. Um, if you have it from the developer, you can load it out with weapons to look at, but obviously you can't fire them. And there is a, a second piece of software you can install that um, provides the radar display. And that works quite nicely. I've not got it running at the moment, which is why we can't see it. Anyway, that is the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter. Hopefully you found that interesting today, about like kind of operating at high Mac numbers. And I'll see you again soon. Look at the heat pouring out of it. <laughs> right, I'm going to leave it there. See you soon.